So I, I've known Ginger for, I don't know, four or five years. Um, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to Ginger to tell you what her talk is about. I'm really looking forward to hearing about it. I, this, this is an issue that I come across all the time with problems and solutions kind of being the, the gold standard in how you, uh, how you go about uh, launching a startup. Uh, but I wanted to tell you something about Ginger for which we will forever be grateful. The name Hub 101 came from Ginger. Um, she had started an after-hours co-working space in the Valley, and around the time we were starting this one, she was wrapping that one up, and um, we had, we had uh, we kind of liked the name Hub 101 and, and reached out to Ginger and asked, if you're done with it, can we have it? And she said, sure, absolutely. Uh, and it's that kind of, that kind of, uh, it's that kind of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of action that we like to see in a startup community. Where we're all in it together, we're all here to help each other, and uh, uh, we're all better for it. So I'm thrilled to have Ginger come speak, and without further ado, Ginger Zumeda. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I I'm going to try something here. Can you hear me? No. You can't? I, I talk with yes. my hands, so I'm going to try to project and not hold this if, if I can. Maybe I'll point it at me. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to hold this. Okay, I'll do it. One sec. Actually, no. I'm going to move around, if that's okay. Okay. Um, thank you. So thanks, everybody, for being here. I'm going to try to hold this to my mouth, even though I'm talking to my hands. Um, very briefly, I'm the CEO and founder of Zumeda Group. I say Zumeda Group because most of you can't say Sumayeta, which is the way it's really supposed to be pronounced. Um, but we are a management consulting company that leans very hard into marketing. Basically, what we do is we help businesses, mostly medium to large businesses, um, attract, keep, and grow their customer base and business um, by helping build really um, marketing programs that run, that work, and that are sustainable. So that's what we do. Um, but what we're really here for is the big question of solving problems um, or producing outcomes, how to deliver maximum impact. So, so why am I here? And my speaker notes didn't work. I had only a few little pithy things here. But the reason I'm here is because I have been every week or two when I meet with my team and we're talking about our customers, our clients, which are both B2B and B2C customers, we end up going like, wait a minute. What are we here for? What are we really supposed to be doing for this customer? And what happens most of the time is a client or a potential client calls us because there's a problem, right? And what we try to figure out is, is the problem that they're calling about really the problem? And I can't recall even one instance in, in the recent past when the problem was actually the problem. So, I mean, and, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of, of a story about one of the clients that we have now that is in a very different place now. But one of the things is, one of the questions that everybody gets asked, and probably many people in, in this room is, what problem is your business trying to solve? Right? I mean, who's, who's asked that question, been asked that question, or asked that question of their business recently? Right? Yeah, it's, it's pretty normal. Everyone gets... Um, ask that problem. But what we're constantly faced with trying to answer is, is that problem even real? Is that the actual problem? And I'll give you an example. So one of our customers, they're a foundation. They've got these great, um, I'll tell you more about it later in the presentation. But basically what they do is they offer leadership programs to teens, kind of like middle to older teens, so that they've got the, the skills that they actually need for life. It's an amazing program. About two years ago, a good designer friend of mine called me and said, hey, Ginger, 
I have a client that I want to pitch, and can you co-pitch them with me? I was like, okay, great. What's the story? She's like, well, you know, they're this, they're this foundation. They've got this great sort of leadership academy that kids come to, and they want to redo their direct mail. And I took a look at it, and the problem is, like, of course I can do all of the design work, because she's a designer and she's amazing. She's like, but I don't think they're saying the right thing. I think they need some help on marketing. Great. OK, so let's go talk to them. And we went to talk to them, and they told us about their program, and it was amazing. I mean, there's no reason. I'm like, why is this thing not sold out? Like, I mean, waiting list a year long, it's just too good. What's the problem? And we, we, on the phone call, we couldn't figure it out. So what we, one of the things that we do with all of our clients is we actually do a, a kind of a starter workshop where we literally, in a day, pull the business apart, try to figure out what are you really trying to do and what, is, what does that lead up to. And, and so that's, and, and yet still, even that same client comes back to us sometimes with problems and we're like, this is not the problem. You need a roadmap. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into that. So what business, you know, is your, what problem is your business really trying to solve? What we're finding mostly, and a lot of, I think the reason a lot of people in this room have been asked that question is, is this is, in most cases that I've experienced, there's always an exception to every rule. In most cases, this is sort of an early stage business validation problem. Like, is your business solving an actual problem? I think there's a piece of research that I just read. CB Insights said that 47% of startups fail because they set out to, to solve a problem that did not, in fact, exist. There was no market problem that they were trying to solve. So it's absolutely an important question. But my hypothesis is that the, place that the time that that is the most important question is early stage. I think it's a great question, but I think more importantly, I think it's also a trap. And I'm going to explain to you why I think it's a trap. So the problem with the problem question is, in my view, is it's not a guidance system. Once you have actually answered the problem of does my business matter, is there a market for my business, you need to move on from that what problem am I trying to solve and figure out what question can I ask? What's a better question for me to ask, for me and my business to ask that's going to serve as a guidance system? Because as, when, when, you're, when you're dealing with the what problem, does, what problem am I trying to solve problem, it doesn't tell you what to do. It tells you to go and perform a task and to fix a problem. And what I see all the time, I mean, especially when we get called into to fix marketing problems, it's we see people working really, really hard marketing. And we're marketers, but we're like, why are you working so hard trying to market? Like, maybe that's not the problem. When you're trying to optimize your site, and I've got to go change the web page, and like, I mean, how many people in this room are planning to change their web page in the process of changing their website or just finished changing their website? Everybody. That's probably not the problem. <laughs> you know I mean? It could be a part of it, but it's probably not the problem. And so what you really need is a guidance system. All right. So you need a better question. These aren't working, so I'm just going to turn it off and we'll just reform it. You need a better question, right? And I think the, the better question is, what are you really trying to accomplish as a business? What are you really, truly trying to accomplish? And here's the tricky part. It's not, I need more sales. And it's not, you know, I, I, I need more, I need better marketing deck. What are you trying to accomplish not for you, but for your customer? Period. That's the only question that is going to ultimately guide you and, and serve as your North Star and help you actually, it's, this is your decision support tool. When you're like, what should we do? You've got to go back and ask yourself, what's the outcome that we're trying to produce for our customer? And I'm going to give you some, some examples of that. So just wrapping up this piece, you know, 
where we kind of think the, the what problem are you trying to solve is at this life stage of a company, it takes a while to prove your company. Then once you start proving your company, you actually see things starting to accelerate upwards. That's where you need to kind of switch to your what outcome am I trying to produce for my customer. And then, of course, every, every business has a life cycle. And you peak. You, life moves on. Things change. You didn't s stay up to somehow. And then it's time to go back and say, what problem am I trying to solve? And you, and you keep going on and on. All right. So the reason we are so focused on outcomes is because when you get to the zone of producing outcomes for your customers, you grow. It's as simple as that, right? Like, how do I hold a conversation? How do I find myself a mentor? Now that I'm about to go into my career, how do I time manage myself? How do I set goals? How do I actually plan to achieve those goals? Like, how do I become a future leader? Amazing. And they have people come in like Michael Strahan and Eric Garcetti and, and Paula Abdul and all sorts. I mean, it, it's like, and you're not successful. Why? And the problem was, they were like, well, look at this direct mail piece. We don't understand why this didn't work. There's this other similar program that they do direct. I do direct mail in my other business, which is dentistry, and it works amazing, right? And they had basically spent... Mm, 60 grand on a direct mail campaign, two responses. I mean, I was heartbroken. I'm like, this, that's terrible, right? And he's like, I just don't understand why this didn't work. And so when we went and actually did the workshop, we were like, what is it that you're trying to do? He walked us through all of this stuff, and it's like, nothing, nothing that I have seen. I've looked at your website. I've looked at your material. Like, where is this talk that you just told me about? Like, it just doesn't exist anywhere. And what are you actually doing not to sell people registration? What we were there to do is help them get more folks. They were giving away so many scholarships because they're so committed to the cause that they were just underwater constantly. And so we basically peeled apart their business and found out, oh, You've got this amazing stuff. Well, how do we start doing that? Let's serve people beyond trying to sell people. Let's serve first. And long story short, we got them about half a million dollars in seven months. It was the first time they broke even in 10 years. He was about to shut down the program. But our thing is it was, they were asking the wrong question. Another client of ours, Kaiser Permanente, big healthcare company. You might have heard of them. So they called, I've been working for them for, for many years, but one of the projects that I'm most proud of is, they were like, Ginger, we kill everybody on maternity. Those are not the right words you want to put together. <laughs> um, we are amazing. This, our success in maternity is amazing, right? I mean, they've got lowest risk rates, highly successful maternity program. The, the way their model works you have all of your specialists built in, and they're like, but we don't actually get the credit for it, right? And here's a healthcare company, and one of the things that they were doing, so, so, so the goal was, how do we turn maternity into a service line? They didn't have a strategy yet, but like, how do we brand this? How do we pull it together? And so one of the things that we took a look at, and there were many work streams, but one of them was the digital work stream that, that we worked on. And we basically picked apart their site. They had a place. I think you can still find it if you want to compare and contrast these two experiences. Um, they had KP.org pregnancy. We're a healthcare company. Mothers to be really, mothers to be especially now, most are millennials. Most have grown up with a phone in their hands. They become subject matter experts on baby making, like, in minutes. I mean, they are just devouring content. And the problem is that a lot of content doesn't agree with each other, right? So it's be con very confusing. So like, hey, we're a healthcare company. Moms-to-be, especially new moms-to-be, first-time moms-to-be, have a lot of questions. We can legitimately give them a lot of information. And they did. And it felt like a wiki. It was like so much information, like where do I start, where do I begin? I mean, a million CTAs, like where am I supposed to go? Very, very complex. But it's because they, were, they started with the wrong premise. When we sat back with their team and said, what are we really trying to produce? And this is like with the clinicians and the doctors and the marketing teams and everybody. And they were like, well, we want you know, our members, 
our moms to be completely delighted with their maternity experience in Kaiser Permanente in ways that they can only be delighted at Kaiser Permanente because they're a differentiated model. And so the, this emphasis on we want to delight and help our members through their first pregnancy, which has a lot of different information, produced a different outcome in a different direction. And what we ended up doing, and you can't see it great, but if you go to kp.org maternity, that's my baby, um, we created an experience that took them from pre-pregnancy to taking their baby home that was in lockstep with the journey. And then that journey started to bounce out to other experiences. You know, one of the things that we're working on right now is, well, if I'm getting all of this great here, there needs to be great information online. There needs to be continuity when I walk into the doctor's office. There needs to be continuity with the materials that I take home. It all needs to match. But the guidance system is what really made all of the difference. It's like we literally sit there like, is this delighting the mother to be? Is this helping her through the journey? It's like, no, this is a painful process. Okay, we need to do something different. So what we do is we basically go through a process. Every single client, every project, basically, I mean, what we noticed is, first of all, for all of business, short or long term, frameworks and templates are your friends. Like if you do something great once, do it again. <laughs> so we have a process that we follow every single time where we ask six fundamental questions. What's the ultimate outcome that we're trying to produce for them? What do they want? What is going to make the biggest impact? So it's when you're having a baby, right information at the right time in your journey. You want it to be credible, et cetera. You want it to be easy, frictionless, et cetera. If you're trying to, when, when we looked at, and I'm going to take you through an actual template in a minute, but when we were looking at Leap Foundation, their goal is to how do we equip kids with the right tools, training, self-confidence, and motivation to be their best. That changes everything we do from the first time we talk to them to the time they graduate and we connect them with mentors, etc. So what you need is a guidance system and asking what the ultimate outcome is where it's at. Another thing we do all the time, a core part of the process is, what's your story? And I'm going to be very specific here. We are talking about Joseph Campbell's hero's journey type of story. What's the context? What's the conflict? And then what we call it is what's the special magic that makes the conflict resolve? And I'll walk you through a very specific example of that. But really understanding the, the entire context of the, of the outcome that you're trying to produce and being just ridiculously empathetic with your customer is what's going to help get you there. Next thing. What are your customers' core needs? Basic. None of this is rocket science, by the way, but it's vitally important. So you really need to think about not, you know, I'm trying to think of a, of a mundane example. You know, th they need a, a, a book with leadership skills. No, that's not what they need. When we were looking at Leap Foundation, what they were looking, what parents were most looking for is peace of mind. They have raised these children. A, a parent's only job is they are trying to do a good enough job to let that birdie fly, right? Like once they leave. Like they, they want, and they worry. So they were like, do they have the tools? Are they going to be able to make it? Are they going to be successful in life? Are they going to live up to their potential, right? That's what you really want for your child. And you see them sometimes being self-destructive, not having good habits. So when we started getting really empathetic and that we're actually trying to help them have confidence that their kids are going to live up to the potential, give them some assurance, give them actual tools to work with their kids, that changed everything that we did. So what are your customers' core needs? Now we get into strategy, right? This is context. This is understanding. This is empathy so far. What must be true for you to accomplish the outcome? Or your customer, right? So this is basic. These are your strategic. 
in order for us to produce that outcome, what has to be true for that customer? Because that's going to give us the guidance of what we need to help them with. Fulfill a need. A directive need. An intentional lead, right? A very deliberate one that ladders up to that ultimate outcome. Next. What work will you have to do to make these things true? Right? This is, now we're starting to get down into actual work streams. What are the things that we're actually going to have to do, the deliverables we're going to have to produce, that are going to ladder up to make those things true that are going to del deliver our outcome? Right? I'm going to give you the frame. You're taking notes. I'm going to give you a URL at the end of this where you're going to get this and the template and everything else. Um, although I write to remember, so I respect the writing notes because that's how I work too. Ridiculous note take. Um, and then finally, how are you going to me measure your progress towards the outcome? You have your KPIs, key performance indicators, your metrics, right? Your metrics, the ones that matter. There are a lot of metrics that don't matter, and there are a lot of people that like turn the dials and flip the switches trying to move metrics that have nothing to do with the outcome, which is why we put together a sort of guidance system. Every single one of our clients and every single one of our projects, this is the sheet that we say, we're going to give you all of our best thinking. And you can throw it all in the trash when we're done. Just tattoo this to your forehead, put it on your wall. This is your guidance system for the year. And basically what we do is we start out, that doesn't say outcome, but we start out with the vision. What is the outcome we're trying to produce? We build the context, the conflict, and the special magic. We make sure we really understand what we're trying to accomplish in the context of the world. We build out the audience needs to be, because these are really going to color how we build our strategic objectives. So then we lay in our strategic objectives. We build out the work streams that are going to support those. Lock in our metrics, and that's our one sheet. We've got this one sheet cover sheet that we basically start every single meeting with. So it's like, what are we here to do? And a lot of times we even go astray and we're like, wait a minute, where's the strategy sheet? Like, let's pull it out. Like, what are we here to do? Does this matter? Because a lot of what we end up counseling our clients about is they have things that they really, really, really want to do. And we're like, that ain't on here. Like, that just doesn't matter to what you're trying to accomplish. It might be interesting, but it is going to veer you away from your outcome. So we end up, we use it as our decision support tool to keep people in the guardrails that, of the highway that takes them to the place that they're actually trying to go. All right. So just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to walk you through how one kind of works because I know that they're a little bit hard. It's like, whoever's done... I've, I've done so many business model canvases, like uh, I, in my sleep, but there's a knack to them that you get, like a lot of really bad ones until you figure out the mechanics of how they really work. So this was a foundation we worked with. By the way, this has changed because we go and we retweet these every year, but it's basics that, that, that have lasted. And I know you can't read this, so I'm going to sort of read it for you. But our vision was to give parents the peace of mind that their kids have the skills, mindset, and motivation to achieve what they want to achieve and to live up to their fullest potential. That's our job, right? That's what we're, what we're working on. That's what this foundation is working on. The context is a parent's job is to set their kids up for success, right? And your context is always something that you want. If, you, if everyone's going to nod with you on that, you know you hit the context right. If you're like, mm, it's probably not right. The conflict is, but knowing how to do that for kids today is harder than it used to be, right? Lots of distractions. Um, but what is clear to us is that school, the place that they go to for most of their hours of the day, doesn't have all the answers. There's a lot outside of school kids will really be successful that they just don't always get, right? So for 10 years, Leap found Dunk, Leap Foundation, in conjunction with UCLA, has graduated participants with the uh, what? direction. Thank you. I can't hear. The direction and skills to on their and the confidence and the motivation to do it. Right. That's also, by the way, really good elevator pitch. Right. So it, it, it's got your 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 problem and your and your solution built in. 
the audience of um, needs that we were trying to build for parents are peace of mind, confidence that their kid's not going to fail, they're going to live up to their potential, and that they're going to have the skills to put together direction and goals. And then we had things that we needed to do, right? What we needed to do so that the LEAP Foundation could help fulfill their mission is we needed to build awareness with people that didn't know, because they were doing these amazing things, but not enough people actually knew what they were up to. Um, so we needed to build awareness. We needed to, to build an engagement strategy for referrals, meaning there were parents that were like, my kid got back home and it was a different kid. Respectful. Asking what they could do, sitting down to dinner and having wanna, ha wanting to have a conversation, right? But we weren't doing anything to actually help these parents help their other friend parents help their kids. So it's like, what do we need to do to support them? Because they're having these conversations with their network unsupported. So we needed to build programs around that. And then we also needed to build preference by, by leveraging our network. And that's just based on our marketing funnel, is that what we wanted to do, there are other programs that are um, nowhere close to this one. And we needed to, to do a better job telling our story. So we had tactics. And tactics are, this was a, a, mostly a marketing program. So we needed to build out you know, paid social, we need to do search, we need to do engagement strategies and, and build the parent system. We basically, this is where we gave ourselves all of the work to do. And then we had metrics. How are we going to measure that we're doing a good job? So I just want to kind of take you through an example. So, oh, here's, um, this is my, it's really hard. I, I sometimes get tripped up myself. I never understood why goals and objectives, like, aren't are those two different things? Like, how does that work, right? And so we have like a little stress test for did you really identify an outcome? Or did you just identify a metric or a tactic? And I'll give you an example. I, for a long time, have said, it's a lifetime for me, but many of you have said to yourselves, I want to lose weight, right? Or I want to gain weight depending on your metabolism, which I had the problem. But I want to lose weight. And the thing is, that doesn't pass the stress test. And the way we check it is, if you lost the weight, but nothing else changed, would you have achieved your outcome? And the answer is no. If I were 10 pounds lighter, but I still felt the way I feel, looked the way I look in this clothes, have the energy that I have today, I didn't achieve my outcome. So I don't actually want to lose weight. Losing weight is a means to the most vibrant, energetic, getting my swagger on, like, you know, being the sexy inner beast that I actually am. You know, that's the outcome. It's not losing weight. So, I mean, I challenge you when you're thinking of outcomes, you have to go big and then go bigger. I mean, and we call it, you know, we call it maximum impact. When we clicked into, for example, this foundation and working on the maternity work and all of our other clients, sometimes we help them build a bigger vision. Are you really doing the thing that you set out to do in the biggest possible way that you could do it? And what we're doing right now is we're completely changing. Leap Foundation had been doing, they do one week in the summer, every summer, at UCLA, always the same dates. So when we started looking at it, it's like, that's one opportunity in the year for folks to get this amazing program. Like, you're not living up to your mission. That's not your outcome. Your outcome is to produce leaders. So we're like, we've got to change everything. So we built, help them build more programs to go out into communities, completely changing their website. Their website, it's not live yet, but hopefully in another month or two, you know, was really about trying to convince you that this program was good. And I'm like, that's not living up to your mission. That's not building leaders. You want to build leaders? Build leaders. Give the content away. You know, get people fired up. They were, you know, you had only one opportunity to get the education, and now it's like you can do it at your level. We're building curriculum for, for their website, et cetera, et cetera. So ask a better question. Go big. Go for absolute maximum impact, and I think you're going to see different results. Thank you. Um, we've got this deck. 
plus so I think we put kind of three things for you on on the website if you go here one this deck is here so you can kind of read it and, and find your way through um, so it's just zoomatagroup.com slash CLU another thing is the the workbook that we use with a lot of our clients to actually take them through the strategy session that's there for you so if you if you want the strategy workshop but you can't do it with us you can kind of take yourself through through the workshop and of course we do these workshops with a bunch of clients and we'd always love to hear from you and you can um, ping us at hello at Zumeda group or I'm just ginger at Zumeda group if you want to um, contact me correctly so I'd love to there any questions or comments anybody has them cool so for questions we'd like for you to come up to this microphone uh, because we're we're recording um, I guess yeah we I guess the, the the internet gets to see the back of your head but um, but if you could come up and, and ask a question at the mic if you are finding out the goal of the company or how to assist them is it possible that over time that need would change, that goal would change, and then how do you handle that? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the question is, do you ever find out that the, that the goal or the need changes? And I think there's probably a couple ways to answer that. Most of the time, I think, most of the time the outcome doesn't actually change. Um, if we make it big enough, and if it's really something that matters, occasionally we tweak. And we tweak those a lot. We're like, you know what? We didn't put enough of this in there, and so we'll we'll massage the words. Say it with words. Words are vitally important, by the way. Like every word is important. Um, but what we do end up changing a lot is sometimes the core needs change, right? Over time. That your customers need start to change and you realize I need I still want to produce that outcome but I need to do it in a different way so a lot of times what's going to happen is your strategic pillars are going to change your work streams are always being updated but if you can get the top pieces right I don't think there's a lot of change at, at least that's what that's what we go for thank you for the question well, well, yeah. this camera actually works too so I'm going to see if I can adjust oh, Hey, Ginger. Hey. hey. Um, so I wanted to ask, this is a very low mic. That would uh, be too tall for me, too short no. for you. Hello. Um, uh, no, it's good. I can mic. I can, <laughs> I can, I can, I can hold it. I, I can like deal a with it. Star, I don't know. <laughs> a little Elvis. Um, so with our company, I just wanted to just throw this at you. On the website end, our website's pretty static. I've come on pretty new to help grow the business, build the business. Mm -hmm. um, so with a static website, so we make stuff. Right. We can make almost anything. We work in the film industry too, doing stuff for premier sculptures and also on the product end. Would you say that the website then, go and make stuff, meaning show people you make stuff? Uh, in this day and age with the social media, because I'm starting to post stuff that I'm cutting yeah. together and hey, we're going to go in the workshop and I'll walk you through. So that there's some presence on that end? What do you think? I think, first of all, there's a couple very practical reasons to do that, right? So if you've got a static site and you're not doing a lot, search is not going to be friendly to you. You're going to have to pay a lot more. Discoverability matters. But, you know, it's so funny. Sometimes we, we game ourselves, right? And, and I think when we game ourselves, we become very inauthentic. People that need stuff. Even big executives in very big film companies, and I have a history in, in the film business, um, they're still just trying to figure, like, God, can these people do it, right? You know, like, where's, where's my solution? And so I think to the extent, if you're a maker, making something interesting on your site can't hurt. There's always the practical feasibility question and, and, and money question, but I always lean to... If that's what you're saying you do, don't say you're, you do that. Do it. Show it. Don't sell it. And so that's, that's where I lean. Nice. I a, a quick follow-up. Mm -hmm. Am I taking up? People say you have more questions? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> 
So in this, it's amorphous. So if I'm selling real estate, which I used to do, very simple. I've got to find a homeowner, right? Or someone willing to buy the place. It's a very simple business model. This is a little more complex. So what I do is I, I hit the phones and I love the phones. I cold call, you know, hey, how you doing? This is me. I want to introduce myself. And it's not a, um, a very obvious business model to get to reach people. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I already told you like social media, which I've started today, <laughs> sure. posting on Facebook. What are your, some of your thoughts besides hitting the phones, looking for new business leads? Mm -hmm. What are your ideas? I'm kind of old school too. I don't have all the answers. I'm trying to be better at like the whole biz dev thing, but um, but I think I'm, I'm a little old school in that the best thing you can do is be helpful, right? So whether, when we talk to clients, we tend not, or prospects I should say, we tend not to say, oh, I had this company do this to, to me one time. They wanted, they wanted us to pay for the time for us to evaluate whether they were the right vendor. And I was like, are you, I could drop a few words that I say in, in, in delicately, like, are you crazy? I mean, what we just do is like, what's your problem? Like, what can we help with? Like, let me show you what, what we can do. So, so, yes, content is very important because most people, web, you mean web. web yeah. because most people, even in industries that seem like they're very specific, everybody tries to answer all of their questions starting in the Google search bar, period. So you've got to get search. Most folks want to come to us and talk about marketing, and almost every time we end up talking to them about search. Are you discovered for those few people that really need you, when they go looking, are you going to be there? And are you going to be there really demonstrating, you know, that, that you're amazing at what you do? And so part of that is the content game. It's social, but it's more than social. And social is a very complex beast because it ain't free almost ever. But, but, um, but you're going to want a combination of really good search mechanics, which some of that is just making sure people check out your website and stuff isn't blocking you. Then it's about putting great content out so you raise your level of discoverability. And then what you actually put out doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be helpful. No. No. And so if you can just demonstrate that you're helpful, I, I think that's going to help. And it's also really helpful if you talk to someone on the phone. I guarantee you while you talk to them, they are letting their fingers do the walking, as they used to say, you know, to go vet you online. And what's going to happen is they're going to type in a couple of search terms and all of your competitors are going to show up too. And then, and then they're going to yeah. put their considerations set together and decide when they're going to give preference. So. Awesome. Yeah, sure. that, applies. that also applies when networking. Because what you're saying, spot. by the way, I agree with every word she said. Yes. Even the ones she may have mispronounced. Uh, which were none that I noticed. What I was going to say is in networking, when you're talking with someone you don't know yet and you've identified the, the context that you work in, real estate, whatever it happens to be, most people, most by a factor of like 9,000 to almost none, start talking about themselves. People say, well, tell me what you do. And instead of telling what you do, if you do what she's suggesting, then you say, well, Let's take an example. And you use them as an example, and you start solving their problem. And they go, oh, that's what you do. Could I have your card? Right? Yeah. I mean, solve the problem on the phone. I have a hilarious story. When I worked at NBC, um, which I worked at for a long time as a vice president of advertising promotion there, and this kid came, this like strapping young man, and he wanted to be my assistant. And I'm like, okay, reading his resume. I mean, no qualifications, really, that he was ready to be an executive assistant at NBC. And I'm like, ah, just my phone was ringing, this stupid phone, and I was trying to figure it out. And he literally, he's like, he reached, he's like, do you mind? I just need to reach across your desk because I know how to fix that right now. And he, and he did this thing, and he fixed it, he's like, my dad 
you know, has worked in the phone business, so I just have this stuff, and I was like, you're hired. I mean, he, I, I, he started solving problems. He didn't wait till he, he didn't say, hey, if I get the job, maybe I'll fix your phone. You know, it's like, he just freaking problem solved right there, which I love. Um, so thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Just help. You know, I mean, the, that's the biggest sales pitch ever, is actually helping people. Anyone else? One. None? All right. So, I just want to mention something. Sales has profoundly changed in the last 10 years. It's profoundly changed. People don't want to be pitched anymore. That's the thing. Right? Yeah. And we have to be interested in, in who you are as a person, right? And to provide big time value. Yeah. That's what I'm finding. You really have to connect with people on a human level. That whole shield is gone. You know, remember the, this is what I do. I'm a selling machine. That's garbage. Yeah, I mean, what's your name? Sasha. Sasha. So Sasha's talking about how selling has changed, and I couldn't agree more. And, and I think it's actually gone, you know, every, everything is a wheel. Right? Like, everything goes up and down. And it used to be you just created a relationship with someone. Um, and then a lot of technology got in the way, right? And so now it's interesting because, like, I don't even want to, like, most of the time, I don't want to engage. Like, I want it, I'm going to be doing research, I'm going to be vetting, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff, and if it's like, no, I don't want to hear, people, hey, I've got a blah, 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 no, I, I'm going to do my research first. Then, after you've done that, and you kind of get into the process, what you want is an authentic conversation. Absolutely. You know, and so, so these things are kind of going in a, in a cyclical way, because where I think we're going now, which is much more interesting, is how do people be really authentic from the get-go in the digital streams? Just be, we, we, we have this, this word that we say all the time. We're always like, how do we be human? Like, I mean, even we, we try to write in a clear and simple way, not use a lot of jargon, not try to be like the most intellectual in the room. We're like, let's just be really human, person to person. We're trying to solve problems with you. Yeah. Hi. Um, so my company has several customer segments. Um, Overall, we kind of provide the same value proposition, um, which is to help physical therapy patients recover faster. Um, but what you know, kind of physical, therapy physical therapy patients. But we have you know healthcare providers. We have have workers, compensation insurance companies. We have physical therapists, etc. So, um, for example, that strategy, um, one-page strategy um, sheet that you had up. Would you recommend doing that for each customer segment? Um, or just having an overall umbrella? Uh, uh, two things, right? So in the really big companies that we work for, like Kaiser Permanente, we've got multiple, okay. right? I mean, I help build their multicultural brand. There was a thing for that. There's maternity. There's a thing for that. We just help them buy another, you know, help, them buy, help them integrate um, a health plan that they bought up in Washington State, different one for that. But, the Uber, you should have at least one Uber one. Like, I'll tell you this, and it's very inspiring. Kaiser Permanente's mission, total health for all. What kind of does that? Yeah. You know what that drives? They try to drive affordability because that's, it's their guidance system. So you need for your company the biggest guidance system. What's the biggest goal that you're going to help your customers in a, in a global way with? And then if different product lines or segments, it can be useful okay. to do it cool. that Thank you. as well. Sure. Anyone else? Going once? Going twice? Let's give Ginger a big round of applause. <laughs>